we were talking about just that 2012, 2013 year with the Knicks and that, that illustrious crew of legends. So mentioned again, we had Kmart, Mello, J.R. Smith, Tyson Chandler, Q. Rich, Jason Kidd, mm -hmm. Amari, Shump, Marcus Canby, Kurt Thomas. I think Prigioni was on there too. Like Pablo. You had, Pablo. Yeah, you had, mm -hmm. you had a, a, an elite crew there. So what, you came out of retirement to actually play on that squad. So I just want to know from both of y'all, what was that like? Obviously, two former rivals going up against each other in the league to now be teammates on this same team with all these dynamic personalities. Man, I loved it. That meant we could beat these motherfuckers up, and I ain't had to get beat up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, shit, we, when you're going against certain players, you know it's going to be war. You know what I'm saying? So to be thankful enough to have him, Marcus Canby, and Kurt Thomas on that team, like, those are my veterans now. Um, no disrespect to Tyson or Amari, but, you know, we were the three older power forwards on there. So, uh, you know, it was nights, night in, night out, battling against these guys. So to actually play against them, I was like, I mean, play with them, I was like, all right, cool. Like, like shit, that make the game easier. And then to play with uh, J-Kid, that made it even more crazy because I played against J-Kid in high school at the uh, Beach Ball Classic in, oh, in Myrtle Beach. I remember And got that. to know him, his family, and all of that stuff. So been knowing him since, but he joined the team. Um, Pablo, with him having uh, the resume that he did, coming from Argentina, winning gold medals, you know, busting USA guards ass at that time when they won it. Like, all right, like, this is, like, shit, this is a formidable team. Plus, it was the last time that, I think at that moment, the Knicks had won like 50 plus games. Um, the last time that they had been to the playoffs past the first round. And it was a lot. It was a lot that we set. And our, our main goal was, hey, teamwork make the dream work. Mm. And, but we was definitely enjoying ourselves for sure, a thousand percent. I remember you talk about that beach ball class. My brother played at Crenshaw, so he came back with the program. And that's the first time. I, I think Jermaine played in that, too. He was mm -hmm. younger. But yeah, he was from there. He, yeah. Jermaine went to Eau Claire yeah. down there. So I remember uh, just flipping through it and looking at all these legends playing in that mm -hmm. game and seeing yourself, too. So that's crazy when you say that. But, Kmart, what was it like for you to be on a squad with all these, these legends? Oh, no, it was just, yeah, for... She know this, and when you've always had to be the voice the the keep guys in line th and the the enforcer the like when you've always had to be that and then you get around other people who was that for their team mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can kind of like he said you can kind of like exhale a little bit mm -hmm. yep. and I ain't never been on the team where I had somebody else that was next to me that was the same energy that was the same so I had yeah. she I had Tyson I had so it's like yo I could. I ain't gotta be all of that. I could just go hoop now, and I, but still be that if I need to be. But I could take some of it off, and to have them dudes in the locker room and to just basketball minds to hear the way they think and how they approach the game. And you've always admired it from afar because you battled, and you just knew what they was about, and you knew they was gonna bring their A game every time we played one another. But to have that right there, and me and J Kid already had that rapport. Me and Melo already had that report. Me and JR already had, like, we had already been there. So right. me to know these other guys was my focal point. Me to get to know what I'm saying. So it was, it was dope, man, just being around them and, and just seeing, like, that everything that I thought about them was real. I'm saying they, they validated everything that I had already thought about them. Like, what were those like team plane flights, like bus rides, all that type of stuff? I mean, I know I, stuff on the court, yeah, but like, what's what's the wildest shit? That oh, that's gambling, right there. <laughs> that's, big money right there. That's, that's old money. That's a lot of cards. That's small hundreds. <laughs> cards. Small hundred faces at that point in time. A lot of cards being played. A lot of shit talking. <laughs> yeah. Just just us being, because we were all on the other side of thirty. I'm saying mm -hmm. we 33, 30 plus. So we hanging out. Experience is different. Conversations are different. Life and and coming up with nicknames for guys and shit like that. The fun like, part of the NBA. Yeah, you know, they're like yeah. re, re, knowing your guys and you can say something to somebody and they know where it's coming from. Ain't yeah, nobody ain't getting offended. Ain't nobody taking nothing heart to heart. Like it's yeah. just, it's that. Mm -hmm. Like and, 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 and that's what you need and that's what 
we were so fortunate to have a bunch of, in one locker room. And we had a head coach that allowed us to be grown men and, and Woody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So changing shoot around from us having to get up first thing in the morning to us having to be in the gym at 4.30. Shit like that. Back. Like, cause Players, you can trust though. guys to be professional. We, we, like, that's great. Cause you know, you, you know who you got in your locker room. Mm-hmm. Got a bunch of, all right, some of us kids there, some of us got responsibilities. 85% of us are going out the night before. Yeah. So you know you got us. You know you got it. So see you at 4.30. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which makes more sense, the best, if you really think about it. That should be the time of shoot around. Absolutely. Where you bring the players in right before the game, whatever knowledge you're getting, they can retain it for the game. Right then and there. Versus 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, we all know where that came from. Yeah, the 80s. Yeah, that's the. Right. Yeah, they they were drunk and high. They had to make sure they were still alive. I don't know. <laughs> they was living like shit. <laughs> nobody there when they motherfucking no, they they All serious. fours in the air. <laughs> I, I like the 430s. You know, the 4 four thirty is for the veterans. Because yeah. we know what yeah. the fuck to do. We know what we're doing. Some young guys ask no, the young guys, they do need to. That, that should be that like That year, the Chris Copelands. But, hey. but, but the thing about it, if you, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. But, but think about the young dudes, right? Like, whatever you told them at 10, 11 o'clock, they don't remember. Yeah. I think they, they should do both. Remember. I think they should have to do both. They, yeah. yeah, but like get them ten but, and the four thirty. But right before the game, <laughs> like yo, this is the game plan. Like oh, all right, coach. You tell them at ten eleven. By the yeah, time bro. they get there, bro, they done forgot everything. I got day two day. and a half hours <laughs> plus all night to sober up. Yeah. yeah. So let's get yo. The, the crazy shit I saw when I was there, of course Pablo was a rookie, but he was older and coming from playing overseas, professional, all that, and you don't see rookies. Normally, come out that motherfucker practice over. This motherfucker in there doing him a three minute run every day. Yeah. Every single day, dog. Mm-hmm. Pablo Prigioni ready. did a three minute run every day. That was that was his warm up. Before, 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 before practice. Before practice. He did a three every minute day. run every day, and I was in that motherfucker in awe. Like this, like he really. <laughs> like like, and it, it's crazy because you say that we look at that as torture. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, damn. Got to run today? Like, we got three minutes. Like, he, did that as he did that shit as uh-huh. every single day, man. What's up, everyone? It's Tyler. If you use promo code SHEED, new customers can pair picks with NBA players that have higher than one point. All they have to do is score one point to win. This is the easiest way to make money on underdogs. So make sure you sign up with code SHEED to take advantage and win some money.